In this section, we're going to look at functions and their inverses. And to do that, before we can talk about inverses, we need to talk about whether a function is one-to-one -one or not. Um, and so what that means is a function is one-to-one -one if no two elements in the domain have the same value in the range or the image. So if x1 and x2 are different, then f of x1 and f of x2 must be different. Okay? Um, now again, mostly you're going to be looking at the algebraic form of the function or the graphical form. And so it's not always going to be easy that the, to, to determine if this is true for every value of x. So what we can use is what we call the horizontal line test. A function is one-to-one -one if and only if for every horizontal line that intersects the graph, it does so at most one point. Okay? The if and only if again means it goes both directions. So if I can take any horizontal line and it intersects the graph at most one point, then I know the function is one to one. But that goes the other way as well, as we have it written there. So here I've got a couple different functions. Um, and we want to determine whether or not they pass the horizontal line test. And so this first one we can see easily if I pick horizontal lines down here, again, it passes because I'm not hitting anything. However, if I hit up here, I can see there are two points where the horizontal line intersects. And so this would be a function that is not one-to-one. -one. Okay. In this case, it does not matter where I draw my horizontal line. We can see it's always going to hit in at most one place. Okay, and so this one is a one-to-one -one function. And then your piecewise functions, those are a little harder to determine. Um, in this case, if I did my horizontal lines through the pieces, we can see that it works. But we also need to check kind of the boundary points and make sure that those as well are not intersecting. And so in this one, we can, you know, the only problem point would be these holes, but they're not included, so this would be considered a one-to-one -one function. Okay, and you can do that with any function. We'll, we'll be looking at various forms of functions and trying to determine if they're one-to-one. -one. Okay, the other way you can test one-to-one, -one, again, using your function, is to use this notion in, in the definition. If I pick two different values, call it x1 and x2, and I plug them into the function, do I simplify down and get the same answer? Okay, so I mean, if I take the image of two functions, is it the case that I actually get two different variables? And we can check that algebraically. Okay. So one of the things, um, like I said, we're going to be using this notion of one-to-one -one for is to determine whether or not a function has a, an inverse function. Okay. Now, to start this conversation, um, every function is going to have an inverse. Okay. And the inverse is basically taking the image or the range and rewriting it so that it becomes the domain of the function. And so for a function, if f is a function with domain a and range b, then the inverse function which we'll denote as f inverse, or f to the negative 1, has domain b and range a. More importantly, if f of x equals y, f inverse of y should equal x. And that goes both ways. Okay? Notice here we're talking in terms of functions. Um, but like I said, it's every function has an inverse. So if I have a point on a graph, then if x, y is the point, then y, x is on the inverse. Okay. Now, here I put f inverse in terms of the function notation, but again, if it's not a function, that just means I can still do this, meaning switch the x's and y's to get the inverse. It's just it may not be a function in that sense, and we'll look at some of those. Another property of inverses and their functions, again, if I'm looking at functions, if I take f and compose it with f inverse, then my commutativity holds. So if you remember when we talked about combinations of functions, f composed with g did not always equal g composed with f. However, 
if I'm looking at a function and it's inverse, then f composed with f inverse is the same as f inverse composed with f, and more importantly, it's always going to reduce down to the domain variable. Okay. The graph of f inverse is the graph of f reflected about the line y equals x. So again, if I'm looking at um, a function, these three are all basically saying the same thing. If I have some f of x, and I look at the line segment y equals x, and I reflect it about that, then I'm going to get the inverse function. And more importantly, if I look at this point here, which would be x comma y, then the corresponding point on the inverse is going to be y comma x. So given all of this information, how do we actually find the inverse? Well, to find the inverse, um, given a function, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write it as an equation. And so I have an example here, f of x equaling 4x minus 2 over 3x plus 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this as a y equals. Once I have the equation, I'm going to swap the domain and the range variables. So my domain here is x, range is y, so I'm just going to replace x with y and y with x. Okay. Once I've done that, then I'm going to solve for the new domain variable, which means the y's. I'm going to solve for y. So to solve for y, I'm going to have to multiply in this case. Go ahead and distribute. Okay, notice we have y's on both sides of the equation, so I need to get all the y's to one side. And then I can factor out. So my y is going to equal 2 minus x over 3x minus 4. Okay. This, at this stage, is my inverse. I do have one additional step, and that is to check and see whether or not it's a function. So if it's 1 to 1, then I can write this as a function. If it's not 1 to 1, I'm just going to leave it as y equals. And so here, we can kind of see if I take this function and plug in two different values, so I'll say 4a minus 2 over 3a plus 2 plus 1, equaling 4b minus 2 over 3b plus 1. So taking the image or the range of values and setting them equal to each other, do I get that the variables are the same? So I'm going to multiply, cross multiply to get rid of the fractions. We'll see I get a 12ab minus the 6b plus 4a minus 2. On the other side I get a 12ab minus 6a plus 4b minus 2. 12ab's and the 2's will cancel out. So I get a negative 6b plus 4a equaling negative 6a plus 4b. And then I can combine like terms, so negative 10b equals negative 10a, which says that b equals a. Okay. So in this case, I took two images that were equivalent, and it shows me that the domain variables have to be equivalent, so this is 1 to 1, which means this function that I found, I can write as f inverse of x equaling 2 minus x over 3x minus 4. Okay, So there's my function, there's my inverse function, and if I were to graph these, I would see that, again, I would be able to reflect across the line y equals x, 
and get the same um, reflective images.